Hello, I'm Omnik. I will be solving Cadufaros' second division round and explain what I'm doing. They just close this problem. <clears throat> Array is good if and only if GCD of all the elements is no more than length. Uh, array of length at least two is beautiful if and only if. All its prefixes with the lens at least two are good. Um, but when we increase the lens of prefix, its lens increases and its GCD can only decrease. So we should only check it for prefix of lens two. But also, like this condition can be just checked, right? We can just like calculate GCD. We don't even have to reuse <laughs> already calculated value. What, like, what the fuck is this problem? You can just do what is written in the statement. You can also notice that you only need to check that GCD of first two numbers is at most two and that makes problem harder for you because you need to remember to read all other elements. What an amazing <laughs> problem. Um, yeah, that, that, that just sucks. So, I will read first two numbers. If the GCD is greater than two, I have to print no. Otherwise, print yes. And I have to read add minus two more numbers. Because, of course, doesn't work. Oh, by reordering. Uh, okay, okay. So we need to check if there are two elements with GCD at most two. Okay. The that is actually not, not that bad. <laughs> but the statement could be bad. Now the limitations are understandable. Yeah, everything is okay. We will just try all the pairs of elements. <coughs> and if GCD of those two elements is at most two, then we can put them as two first elements and it will be uh, beautiful or whatever it is called. Yeah, I should 
probably read some numbers. Okay, I think that I failed to explain what's going on here. So, um, to reiterate, uh, an array is good if its GCD is at most length. An array is beautiful if all its prefixes of length, at least two, are good. We are given some numbers, we are asked if we can reorder them to get a beautiful array. And uh, we can notice that to check if the array is beautiful, we actually only need to check the prefix of lens 2. Because for all bigger prefixes, its GCD is at most GCD of first two numbers, and its lens is uh, not less than the lens <coughs> of, well, prefix of lens 2. So, we need to check if GCD of first two numbers is at most two. And to check if we can reorder elements, we need to check if we can choose first two elements. Because so the GCD will be at most two. So we need to check if there are two elements in this array with GCD at most two. Um, and we do it by just Checking all the pairs. I'm starting to see if that's a bit slow, even. Like 500 times 100 times 100 divided by 2. Um, that's the number of times we will call GCD. So 2.5 million calls to GCD function. In one second, like, why, then why the limitations are so big, actually? I mean, the limits are smaller than normally they would be. <coughs> yeah, GCD is not a very fast function, but should be okay. Um, I assume that well, one of the tests is max test. I hope. Okay, <laughs> rough start. Uh, problem B. Have a string of zeros and ones of lengths n. Um, can choose a segment and flip all elements on the segment. We want to get a palindrome after performing inversion magic exactly once. We just need yes or no. Uh, okay. So uh, since our string is just zeros and ones, like to get a palindrome, um, well, we need to compare compare elements, like, well, like like in palindrome, uh, right? <coughs> Um, and if they are equal, we should either include both elements in our segment or include neither of them. And if they are not equal, then we should include exactly one of the elements in the segment we will invert. So if, well, let's look at the positions that we need to include. If there are two positions uh, that we need to include and between them there is a position that we 
don't want to include or like include both then it we can see that it's impossible like we, we cannot include uh, none of the endpoints but if uh, we try to include both then we will include uh, include both of like smaller um, pair that is closer to the center so that's bad so either we don't have anything to fix or all of them are in one segment and uh, yeah in both those cases we can like if uh, there are some and it's just one segment then we take this segment and invert it um, if there are none we can just take like the middle or oh, like the whole string and invert it it still will be a palindrome um, so yeah we will iterate over the first half look uh, if <coughs> we need to change something in the given position and check that um, all the positions in which we need to change something uh, or just one segment. There can be different ways how to check that everything is just on one segment. Um, for example, we can find the uh, left border and the right border and the number of such positions and check that everything between the left and right border uh, needs to be changed. So like the number of positions that we need to change should be right border minus left border plus one or zero so if we need to change this position there is one more position to change if that's the first one uh, then change left border and always change the right border um, if uh, we don't have to change anything or uh, cd is equal to r minus l plus one the answer is yes otherwise no those pokemons like Paldea region is something from the new pokemon game right um, another gift of array uh, why okay so we have an distinct elements in the array that is a gift for some fucking reason. <clears throat> Pre perform operations. Defy ice element uh, of the previous array. Yeah. So we like we have the initial array, and then we apply changes. Each change is just. Uh, set value in point so we get m plus one race um, the elements of each array are paralyzed distinct but there can be repetitions 
like if we had one two we can change it to three two and then three one and like every separate array has distinct values can we actually do that looks like it <coughs> okay so now we have n plus one arrays for each pair of arrays its value the number of distant elements of the concatenation so it's like n plus n minus size of intersection right because uh, in each of the arrays all the elements were distinct so an element can appear twice only if it is an in both arrays and we want the sum of those values overall pairs uh, yeah that's very simple <laughs> Mm. So, <clears throat> so yeah, each pair uh, gives to n minus uh, the size of intersection. So it's like the uh, number. Uh, okay, so it's sum over i j. Uh, sum over all elements x such that uh, x in ai and x in aj but we can change the order of uh, summation swap these two sums we will get sum over x uh, and here will be like number of pairs of arrays in which x is present but if like say x is the number of arrays with number x then the sync is uh, choose two of them to different so if we calculate this value for every x then we can just uh, sum it up over all x's, the number of different x's is n, n plus n. So, yeah. So we only want to calculate this uh, c. Uh, and to do that, we will, like, we will store our current array, and for each element we will uh, <coughs> remember what was the first array that had like this element on this position and when we uh, get a change we need to put new value in this position we will say that it, this was the first time it appeared but also for the old value we will say okay in all the arrays from when it started to now uh, not inclusive it appeared so we should incre increase uh, its value of c by that number of arrays and then in the end we just need to traverse the array one more time and uh, for all elements present now also like consider kind of removing them and adding them to c thus we will calculate the value c uh, and uh, that's it It's an okay problem. Not good, but it's fine. The answer can be long, long. So I will just uh, say that C is long, long. 
So that when we calculate choose two elements from this C, uh, we will not overflow int. And the input format, and then array in some position new value. So I need to clear C up to n plus n. Read the array and for each element we will say that it first appeared in moment zero uh, and now iterate over the moments. Uh, read the position uh, so the element that is on this position right now uh, that's AP for uh, this element we should increase the number of arrays it appeared uh, in by uh, I that's current moment minus uh, B of this position when it was last set and read the new element. Do it again in the end, and now just calculate the answer. is actually like mine is this uh, and here we should have like choose uh, two of m plus one arrays uh, multiplied by two m so like each pair gives two n from the start but then minus uh, num no minus the size of intersection and we just calculated that sum of intersections. <coughs> we have two n bit binary integers n bit change a in into b choose any positive integer k between 1 and n and xor current value of a with either a shifted left by k or shifted right by k wants to perform no more than n operations. And we don't need to minimize the number of operations, just no more than n. Possible, I guess, but yeah, obviously we cannot change zero to anything because this will be zero and this will be zero and zero, so zero is still zero, and we cannot uh, make anything to be zero because we have to shift before sorry after shifting we will surely get a different number so xor of a with itself shifted cannot be zero 
So if one of the numbers is all zeros and the other isn't, then it's impossible. Otherwise, I kind of believe that it should be possible. Yeah, if we were allowed like two n operations, I think we can like, get something like one. No, oh, but even if we do get one, it's no. no. Interesting. Okay, let, let's say that we got one in the lowest bit. Then we can do the following. We can uh, maintain our current string to be like one in the lowest bit and uh, like all correct here. And then we want to make this character correct. And here we don't, don't care right now. And we want to like increase this correct part. How can we do that? We can shift uh, our number to the left so that one is here now. Here we have only zeros and that's good. Um, and if we need to change this number, we will XOR with this. like. Here we will change somehow, but we don't care. Um, and if we don't, we just don't do anything. So in one operation, we can get one more correct digit. Um, okay, so we can get like everything to be correct except uh, this one. And if we need to actually kill it, like make it zero, we can just, um, we know that the resulting number is not zero, so we will have at least one, uh, one on the left, and we can shift it to be like the rightmost one to be in this position, then all other is zeros, and we sort it down. Okay, so that's like one operation per uh, position here, one operation to change this, but I used that I have this one in the lowest bit, which is like it doesn't have to be true. Uh, we can make it happen, but that's a, uh, an operation that doesn't um, make any bit good. So that's not good. What we can do instead is uh, we can find the lowest bit that has one in at least one of uh, like initial or uh, target number. So if uh, our initial number has one and to the right is all zeros. Then we can just apply everything I said uh, to get what we want on 
z on the right. Yeah, but now it's not clear how to remove this one. <laughs> so, like, surprisingly, the other case is simpler. When we have one here, uh, and if we have one here that's already good and look, we, we will not have to remove it afterwards but if we have zero here uh, we can find like the leftmost one here so it's all zeros uh, shift it here make it one now it's correct and now we can fix all the bits that are to the left so it's unclear what to do if the leftmost position is one. Okay, we can set what we want to the left. There will be the rightmost one in the end. Here, actually, but they're equal now uh, because it's not zero. Uh, and now we can remove this one using this rightmost one. Yeah, it will uh, ruin these bits probably, but we have additional operations to fix them in order so we will actually like run right to left and fix every bit in this order now okay that, that works I'm not sure it's the simplest way like it, it's weirdly asymmetric feels like there should be something more symmetrical But I don't know. I, I can see it. That's the that's a valid solution. I should just implement it. It's not hard to implement. And like looking for more symmetric solution doesn't sound like a good strategy in this case.
I need to be careful with what, what is left and what is right. But I guess it doesn't matter much. Like, uh, as long as I'm consistent inside the solution, maybe all the numbers in ANS will be multiplied by minus one, but I can notice that in that. So let's say that negative is uh, moving to the left. So we have A and B. I want to find the first position where it's not zero. Uh, well, in one of the numbers, but uh, I can find in both. And if in one of them it's uh, like it's all zeros. So the first non-zero position is n, kind of, like I should uh, write some special case there. And after that I will be able to yeah, solve two separate cases in the main solution. So if one of them is n and the other is not, it's impossible. So I print minus one. Uh, otherwise, I print zero because I don't have to do anything. So now both are non-zeros. It's possible, uh, but I need to understand how it is possible. So if uh, P is less than Q, so the leftmost one bit in uh, our current string is to the left, it's like the harder case I was talking about, um, and otherwise if Q is strictly less than P, then I have to First, make it to be one without ruining anything to the left of it. Um, let's just make up. Uh, so moving to the left is negative, apparently. <coughs> so I'm making this operation now. Uh, I should have one in position Q. And now, uh, well, I can also check that everything up to position Q is correct as I wanted. Uh, and now I'm running from position Q uh, to the right. And if I need to change the symbol, then I make an operation that changes this symbol and something to the right of it, but not to the left. Okay, 
So the harder case is uh, fix everything to the right, then find the rightmost one there, and then fix everything to the left. So I'm running from uh, p plus one to n. Uh, if it is incorrect now, make up. <clears throat> now I will find the <coughs> rightmost one in array B. And now fix everything on the left from P run to the left. So I printed minus two three and the answer is three minus two. Um, so three is shifting to the left here. So I should multiply by minus one. So okay, I'm shifting by two. I will get one one zero one one. Uh, and after that I shift in by minus three, I will get one one zero zero zero. Okay. That sounds correct. Um, Why this perk exists? It's better without this. Like, I mean, how is this problem about music games? I just don't understand it, like, why you as a problem setter would want to write this? It's not funny, it doesn't help with understanding the problem. It's just bullshit. <laughs> okay, whatever. So we have an increase in positive integers f of x, the number of i side that so s n is fixed. Um, 
n is just this number and so f of x like we take uh, as n divided by x rounded down and rounded up and we want to express as i as a sum of these two numbers with non-negative coefficients. Why? <laughs> okay, so uh, sum of Sn. Okay, so we should probably solve in something like and maybe times log plus um, limit on the maximum. This looks like just a hash. I mean, I'm not sure. But let's try to understand what is fx, I guess. Okay, so um, f of x number of i for which s i which is a given number can be expressed as s n divided by x rounded down with some non negative coefficient plus uh, s n divided by x rounded up so <laughs> what does that mean so we kind of have like this number we have this number uh, and we can take them some several times we want to get this number Okay, but these two numbers are either equal or different by one. So if uh, a sum is divisible by x, it means that Sn divided by x rounded down is the same as Sn divided by x rounded up and we are just asked uh, like Ci should be divisible by uh, Sn divided by x Okay, maybe it's not just her. Um, okay, if Sn is not divisible by x, that means that Sn divided by x rounded up is Sn divided by x rounded down plus 1. And we want Si to be uh, represented in this way, but we can rewrite it as Pi plus Qi uh, times Sn divided by x rounded down um, plus Qi. Because like this is Sn divided by x rounded down plus 1. So we get this, uh, but like that means that it is just any number, but this should be at most this number. But obviously we can just uh, 
like this looks like division of this number by this with reminder so this is the reminder this is the quotient uh, and we want this to be at most this So we want it to be like we want this to be as small as possible, we want this to be as big as possible. So just division with reminder is the best possible thing. Uh, in which case this will be as I mod this number and this will be uh, as I divided by this number round down. Okay, and we want this number to be at least this. And actually, in this case, it's similar. Like, if, uh, oh no, no, it, it, it is not. Uh, want to check if it is just divisible, so this is zero. But this can be more than zero. Okay. Okay, so we can see that f of x actually depends only on uh, s and divided by x rounded down. Uh, and whether s n is divisible by x. Okay. Um, but then. Uh, the number of different values of the sink is like all of square root of Sn. Well, 
Yeah, it, it shouldn't be. It, it should be pretty easy. Um, so let's say that f of x is well number of i. It means that it is sum over all i, whether uh, this pair of s i and x works. But let's call it like g of s i x. It is one if it is possible to find such p and q and zero if it is not possible. Uh, then our answer, like we can uh, can substitute here. But well, hmm. what is the time limit? Two seconds, two sevens should be <laughs> should be okay. Um, okay, well, well we, we can just calculate f of x. <laughs> so if x is uh, a divisor of Sn, we just iterate over all numbers and check if they are divisible by this. Um, otherwise, we need to calculate the number of uh, uh, Si for which like this uh, holds. Let's call like, I is, is Sn divided by x, rounded down. So we want to calculate the number of SIs for which SI mod Y is at most uh, S divided by Y rounded down. Uh, we can um, iterate over this number, it's called K, then uh, SI should be what? Uh, first of all, like it should hold that this is equal to K, and also um, the remainder model of I is at most K, so uh, SI is at most Y times K plus K, right? Uh, and this means that SI is at most, um, like it should be strictly smaller than Y times K plus one, right? Uh, but also at least K times Y. So SI uh, is good for a given pair of Y and K if it is from K times Y up to minimum of this and this minus one. Uh, so for example, we can uh, just pre-calculate um, prefix sums for to, to be able to calculate the number of given numbers in segment and then just uh, take number of SIs on this segment for a given pair of Y and K. Uh, and we only need to iterate uh, over them um, for y times k at most Sn. Uh, and that's uh, well known that it's harmonic series, so it's uh, s log s. Um, if we are careful to calculate uh, it once for every value of y. So uh, we need to group x's by their value of y, which is 
as n divided by x. Round it down and calculate f of x once for each such group. And then just sum up answers. Um, okay, it's a very weird problem. It's, it's not interesting. It doesn't use doesn't <laughs> use anything. The problem about like harmonic series exists. So you can just calculate f of x. Why, why such a hash? Weird. Well, uh, I guess it, it's possible. So they will get the same limit. But it shouldn't be. Why module? Like, this is obviously bounded by Sn times n. Like, it, it, it's not a f of x is the number of i such that something but there are like only n possible values of i so f of x is obviously at most n and this oh we multiply by x so uh, yeah it can be me mm. whatever mm. i Couldn't they give bigger memory limit if they expect this? I shouldn't be close to memory limit, but it's, it's still a bit weird. Uh, oh yeah, I shouldn't be close to memory limit. Whatever.
Okay, so now I have those prefix sums, and it's just like the last number. And yeah. So I will kind of iterate over x, which is this x. So I need to calculate this sum. Um, so I will calculate f of x for the given x, but then I will jump to the next x for which uh, it's calculated differently. Uh, and we remember that we had different cases. is divisible by x and if it is not So here I want to have uh, to jump to the uh, next value for which n divided by that value rounded down is different from n divided by x rounded down. Uh, so this is my value y and I want to find the value for which n uh, divided by r should be strictly smaller than y. Uh, that means that, and r is the smallest actually, that means that uh, n is strictly smaller than y times r. Um, and that just means that r is uh, n divided by y plus 1. Right? Right. But if n, uh, if n is divisible by x, I also should stop. So it's not plus 1, but rounded, just rounded up. So it's like n minus 1 divided by y plus 1. Okay, so this is the next value for x. And uh, what I should add to answer, to answer I should add um, solve if not divisible uh, of y multiplied by the sum of all x's for which f of x is equal to that value and that is the sum of numbers from x inclusive to r not inclusive uh, that's something uh, x plus r minus 1 times r minus 6 divided by 2 something like that <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, Ants still fits in Hong Kong, correct? So this is at most N. Oh no, N is up to 10 to the 6. Yeah. A bit too much. <laughs> Why make such high limitations on what we're trying to cut off? I just don't understand this problem. Um, so if divisible, we just want to calculate the number of um, numbers that are divisible by x. To do that, we will just iterate over every possible result of division. Here I said that right border is minimum of this and this minus one. So it's like y multiplied by k minus x. <laughs> so it's just left border plus minimum of k and x minus one. But also we should take minimum with n plus one because I haven't calculated prefix sums that big. can hope that it works and is fast enough. It shouldn't matter which compiler probably... Well, there is a lot of input, but like the number of operations with model, like I'm even using division by two model, even though it's like constant in my implementation, but still, uh, but like number of times I will call something here is uh, square root something. So like the slowest part is here and here we don't even have long longs. Yeah. Okay. 45 minutes. <clears throat> Problem F. Uh, string Battlefronts 80, maybe it's not a string problem. Like, there can be a string problem with S up to, lens up to 80, maybe it's interesting. So, string is powerful if it's a power. Make, makes sense, yeah. <laughs> so string is powerful if it is a concatenation of k at least two copies of some string. Um, so a string longest powerful subsequence find length. Okay. So it, it is a string problem, kind of. Well, it's probably a brute force problem, right?
Okay, so we have a string. We want to choose some subsequence with max length so that it's a power of some string. Um, let's see here. So, uh, for example, if it, it is a power of string of length 3, then like this triplet should be equal to this triplet should be equal to this triplet. Um, so let's iterate over k, the number of repetitions. If k is equal to 2, then we have just two groups, but that means that uh, at some point we should split our string, right? So, and if we fix this split, then we just want to find the longest common subsequence of prefix and suffix. Uh, we can do that uh, in n squared, and we need to try all the options where to split, so um, it's n times n squared, n cube. Um, okay. k equal to 3. We can either try to do something similar, like fix two splits, find longest common subsequence of all three of those things, and we can actually do that in like n to the fifths, right? Like uh, we should fix two splits, and well, as we find longest common subsequence of uh, two strings. Uh, similarly, we can find longest common subsequence of s three strings with dp on three parameters. Um, so it will be like of n to the fifths, but it is actually like n to the fifths divided by five factorial. So it's okay. Um, okay. K equal to four is not interesting because four is divisible by two, and if something is a fourth power, it is also a second power of like, the, the string repeated two times, and we didn't care that uh, like, the string can be a power or whatever. So uh, already solved. when k equal to 2. And if k is equal to 5, that means that um, length of our string is at most n divided by k, right? And moreover, we still like we, we must split into k parts and find something there. So uh, there exists a subsequence, uh, no, not subsequence, subsegment uh, of lens n over k such that uh, our string of which we will take the power uh, is a subsequence and we can just try all of them and for each one um, try to find the optimal solution so if we know the string we just uh, Well, try to find uh, the first occurrence of uh, it as a subsequence and second sort and like as many as we can. So this would work in um, there are n 
segments uh, we then have to try 2 to the power of n over 5 so 2 to the power of 16 uh, subsequences and for each of them just greedily find occurrences as much as we can uh, that's another n uh, square times 2 to the 16th should be should be okay right 2 to the power 22 times 100 should be okay what is the time limit 2 seconds Is it fast enough? Can we do it better?
I, I think it should be okay. <laughs> should be fast enough, and I cannot come up with anything better in the spot. Well, some constant <laughs> optimizations, I guess, can be done. Like, I want to reduce this. So, what was the idea here? Is that we should have five uh, parts. One of the parts is short and we can choose a subsequence in the, that part. But for two of the parts, prefix and suffix, we know where they start and end, uh, respectively. So uh, we can try for them to have like longer lengths, considering that we know where they start and end. Let's say that we uh, will iterate up to 19 so either we will find the optimal solution or in the optimal solution both prefix and suffix part uh, should be at least 20 but that means that on three middle parts we only have 40 left so uh, the shortest of them is at most 40 divided by 3 rounded down, so that's 13. And like for all the segments of length 13, we can uh, try all the sub-sequences. So that will, in that way, we will try 2 to the power of 19 plus 2 to the power of 19 plus 2 to the power of 13 multiplied by like it's not even 80 let's say i don't know 60 but it's even less than that actually it doesn't matter so that's roughly like one and a half million right so this is like 2 to the 6, so it's 3 times 2 to the 19, so that's roughly 1.5 million, and multiply by 80, that's very low. Near to 2 to the 8. That should be fast for sure. 27 minutes. But well, it, uh, the implementation is simple. 
yeah, th there are like uh, three different parts, but that doesn't really matter. Interesting why they didn't ask for the actual answer. Like, what's what's the issue? <laughs> if if I can find the lens, I can surely find the actual string. I mean, uh, no, Th that's not true. But I mean, like for uh, okay. My solution totally is able to find the string. Yeah, I will have to uh, restore the answer in dynamic programming, which is uh, not very nice, but it's not a big problem. <laughs> it can be done. Okay, so uh, we have three parts. First, we split into two halves. And try to solve uh, uh, like this longest come sequence of two strings. Uh, then we split into three parts. then uh, I will have kind of brute force uh, solution. So we, we are iterating over all uh, subsequences of a given segment. Well, uh, let's just write a function, uh, try uh, subsequences of segment um, oh I can just give the string right? try subsequences of um, so yeah if n is less than 20 uh, just try all of them um, otherwise try subsequences of first 19 symbols try subsequences of uh, last 19 symbols and for i from um, well whatever let's uh, not try to be too smart uh, for i from zero try subsequences of uh, subsequences of substring of length 13 starting from position i uh, that's it.
Just standard long scan specifications. Uh, now do the same with three dimensions. Probably could have written it so it will be easier to change, but I didn't, so <laughs> I'll have to suffer from my sins. And here, uh, all three should be equal. Thus, all three should exist and all three should be equal. Would I write it recursively or it doesn't? It doesn't matter. Um, um, I don't have to trace empty. So uh, now I want to uh, find as much as possible occurrences of the sync in uh, S. I should increase pause, address, and pause, but pause. Uh, click. 
if I reach then of the string, I should return to the beginning. Um, and now I should update the answer, uh, but not with res, but with like uh, total number of occurrences uh, multiplied by lens well, basically and actually like only if it is uh, big enough like if I have at least two occurrences so I can say, say like this is uh, divided by scissor and if this is at least two then I should update with uh, this multiplied by scissor the samples will not tell much because well uh, this part covers all short strings it actually wasn't very fast um, which part wasn't first first well <laughs> yes it was expected and that string is not even that long well I mean, it's half a second should be fine this kind of problems when like, you need to write some smart brute force except for something for which you can do some preliminary um, yeah. the, the problems that play with our perceived how we assume uh, limitations and complexity works. So like 80 sounds like too much for any kind of um, exponential solution, but it's not if the base of that exponent is small enough in this case, it's like, uh, fifth root of two <laughs> so it's like fifth root of two uh, to the power of length of the string and that is okay so yeah problem f was nice everything else really two gifts I mean problem A is okay I guess and it's even hard yeah A is a bit 
more than B, that just means that A is harder than B. Um, yeah, B is bad. C. Uh, yeah, probably C is fine. I guess it's. It's a nice exercise, yeah. No problem. Problem D. Hmm. Okay. Problem E is very weird. <laughs> but what is it? Yeah, no, 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 don't like it. Even though, like, I like harmonic series and I think that it's like the most beautiful thing in competitive programming, but. This problem is not good. Um, problem F. Nice, nice. Like problem F. Okay, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.